designed something wonderful for your hand. Just wonderful. So a few months ago, I got a new phone, and when it arrived, I immediately went online and I bought some accessories. I got a case, a screen protector, and then I decided I wanted to try one of these. Now, most people know these as pop sockets. You just sort of stick it onto the back of your phone, and then you can hold it like this. And what this does is it provides a tremendous amount of confidence when holding your phone. You can tap, you can scroll and reach all without ever feeling like you're about to drop it. This has made my phone so much more of a pleasure to use. It is infuriating. Phones have been getting bigger and it's kind of hilarious that a market for solutions that help manage this largeness has popped up over the years. You've got pop sockets, grip cases, and these metal ring things. And these are all products that consumers buy over and over again to mitigate the problem of a phone that is too big, too slippery, and very expensive to repair. And you can even see solutions to this problem in software with multiple phone manufacturers implementing ways to make the top of the phone easier to reach. But none of that makes sense. I feel like the fact that all of these fixes and products, the fact that they exist means that something is fundamentally wrong with the way phones are designed these days. See, this wasn't always the case. Apple back in 2013 was extremely defensive of the small phone, saying that iPhone 5, which had a four inch screen, was already some sort of platonic ideal that they found and that phones really shouldn't get any bigger. Your thumb, it goes from here to here. This bigger screen goes from here to here. Now, that's either A, an amazing coincidence, or B, a dazzling display of common sense. Pretty sure it's the common sense thing. And that argument kind of makes sense. Objects that we interact with are usually designed at human scale. Like, you wouldn't design a computer mouse that was too big to fit a human hand, nor would you design a house with light switches so high up that only an NBA player could reach them, right? But meanwhile, pulling down the control center or the notification shade, say, to turn the lights on, the flashlight, just kind of feels like it's out of reach. Like, every once in a while, you feel like you're about to drop your phone doing it. Remember when it was discovered that iOS 14 added a back tap accessibility gesture that would allow you to trigger all sorts of functions in your phone just by tapping the back of your phone a couple times? I feel like most YouTubers when they shared this said that. So I have mine set up for a double tap to launch the control center. I have it set to control center. You can see I have a double tap set up for control center. It's like almost they all agree that reaching the top of the phone is is very annoying and they'll take almost any feature that keeps you from having to pull down from the top of the screen. But wait, you say, you have a second hand, why don't you use it? Here's, here's the thing, when I'm using a pop socket, I never feel the need to use a second hand, except maybe when I'm typing. I could very comfortably cruise around the phone one handed with a pop socket on the back. So why should your phone always require you to have your other hand free? Because there's a lot of situations where you don't have your other hand free, like when you're carrying something or when you're holding something or when you're eating. Now, I'm not saying that big phones shouldn't exist. There are a number of good reasons to want or really need a big phone. Maybe you enjoy the larger screen for watching video. Maybe it's because you want the better features the manufacturers put into a big phone, like a larger battery or more cameras. Maybe you need a larger phone because you're hard of sight and the scaled up interface that's possible on a plus sized phone is more comfortable to read. Those are all very good reasons to buy the bigger phone. My argument is that even if you do choose the larger phone, it should shouldn't be harder to use, like you shouldn't be punished when you don't have both hands available. The other thing I think I should mention at this point is that the way people use their phones is very diverse. Again, 
I use my phone almost exclusively with one hand, which is why I have a lot of these complaints. But in fact, according to Stephen Huber, who is somebody who has spent a lot of time looking at how people use their phones, this way of holding your phone accounts for a very staggeringly small percentage of use cases. While most people hold their phone with one hand, they usually interact with the thumb or index finger of the other hand, meaning they either cradle their phone like this, or they hold and tap like or they hold and tap like this. But here's the thing, making the phone easier for one-handed use doesn't automatically mean it's harder to use two-handed. You're not sacrificing anything there, or at least you shouldn't need to. And optimizing the design for one-handed use just means that when a primarily two-handed user has to fall back to a single hand, like when their other hand isn't free, they can do so very comfortably. Okay, so I've done enough complaining at this point. How do we fix this? Well, to answer that, I thought it would be kind of interesting to go back in time because before Apple had touchscreens, Apple had this, the scroll wheel. There it is, right there. So, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs and it goes right in my car. What I want to point out here is that with pretty much every iPod other than the touchscreen iPods, all of the interaction was relegated to the bottom half of the device. Choose your music with one hand. You didn't have to reach or adjust your grip to access all of the features of the UI. You just sort of scrolled and clicked and listened to music. It was beautiful. And the great thing about this design is that it scales. The click wheel could be comfortably used on any size device because the size of the area that you interact with doesn't change a whole lot. You could use the click wheel on devices as small as an iPod Nano or as big as a TV. Think about cars. They come in a bunch of different sizes, but they all are driven by pretty much the same size steering wheel. An average full-size pickup is about five feet longer than a Prius, but imagine if the steering wheel scaled accordingly. It would be kind of silly because it doesn't need to be. A precise input device doesn't have to scale with the size of the thing you're controlling. Now, there's a problem with this analogy though. And it's that iPods and cars operate on indirect interaction, but touchscreens generally operate on direct interaction. And these are two different paradigms for how you can design and use an interface. On an iPod, you manipulate the input device to control a cursor on a screen. So you're controlling things indirectly, but on a smartphone with a touchscreen, you're very directly manipulating things. You're tapping, you're dragging, and all of these things map linearly to what happens underneath your finger. And see, that's the problem. It necessitates that the input device scale with the entire surface that requires interaction. But what if the entire surface didn't require interaction? T to give you an idea for what I mean by that, imagine if we just simply moved everything down. The idea is, is that when a user opens a new screen, whether that's launching an app or navigating to a new page, the title for the page should take up a lot of space in an effort to push what is normally at the top of the screen down so you can reach it. But you should still be able to scroll to fill the screen with your main content. Now, Apple already does this with their large navigation bar headers that were introduced in iOS 11. And the design pushes the content and the buttons down to be slightly easier to reach. Samsung's One UI takes this a step further and is more in line with what I want. Most apps launch with a header that fills almost half of the screen, meaning it's not super hard to reach almost anything. Now, the other solution I think is great is to start adopting bottom toolbars. iOS already does this with the Mail and the Notes app. The Compose button for both of those apps lives in a toolbar at the bottom of the screen where it's within reach. Whereas in the Messaging app, the Compose button is in the top right-hand corner of the screen where it's really cumbersome. The way Android handles this is the Floating Action button, which is another great solution to the problem if you don't want a toolbar spanning the bottom. What I'm saying is that for phones, and this doesn't really quite work for tablets and foldables, most actions should be doable within this very easily reachable region of the device. Now, that could mean occasionally that you would have to scroll the view to get your content within reach, but that's okay. I think that asking the user to scroll the content down is a much better solution than asking them to shift their phones down. The alternative to this is the cumbersome interfaces that we have right now. I'll, I'll give you one example, the podcast app. If I want to search for a podcast, I tap the search tab and then I have to reach all the way to the top just to get to the search bar and complete my search. Why isn't the search bar at the bottom? Because that's the primary action I want to complete if I hit the search tab. And if I decided I wanted to cancel my search,
How is this acceptable? Who thought of this? I, this is completely out of reach. Now, the new design guidelines in iOS 14 kind of mitigate this. For example, in the music app, tapping the search tab brings up the search page as before, but tapping the search tab again focuses the search bar and opens the keyboard. But this still kind of feels like a band-aid solution though. Like why couldn't the search bar be within reach in the first place? Like it's, it's very frustrating. I believe that design ought to respect the user, that if design respected the user from the start, we wouldn't have to spend all of this time creating things to mitigate bad design. But I recognize that this way of thinking is solely idealistic and it's not very practical. Smartphone interfaces are getting to be very complex as we ask more of our phones and it's very hard to develop new ways of interacting that help manage that complexity and it's hard to develop interfaces that neither compromise nor inconvenience the user but it doesn't mean that we can't try. Like we could start by analyzing all of these existing expectations for how we think phone interfaces should look and feel and then start creating new guidelines for how phone interfaces should scale with physical size. Look, it's, it's already astonishing the amount of stuff that we can do on a device that even in its largest forms are so much smaller than the computers they're slowly replacing. For much of the world, they're becoming people's primary computing device. And as phone sizes continue to trend larger and foldables are on the horizon, maybe it is time that we should rethink how we interact with them. But it looks like in the meantime, I'll be using one of these. Thanks for watching.